Hey there folks, it's Richard of DoomedMovieThon.com back with another episode of My Horror Shelfie. My Horror Shelfie is a series where I talk about every single horror movie on my horror movie shelves from A to Z and you're trapped here with me because you chose the clickening. We are still in the very long letter of H because every horror movie starts with H because of the letter H. But before we get started, let's go pick some movies. From the shelves. Movies. Okay, first up is of course the Mario Bava and uh, Hercules in the Haunted World, a movie that is rare to my collection because I don't have a lot of the sword and sandal movies, aka peplum movies, which were a huge part of the Italian film industry for a very long time. Uh, but this, of course, is the most horror one that I've found, and uh, it's beautiful. Christopher Lee is excellent. Very colorful, very gothic horror. Um, it's got some monsters in it, and the sets and the special effects by Mario Bava are wild and awesome. So, highly recommend Hercules in the Haunted World. It's got that Tim Lucas commentary, which is always a pleasure. From the land of Japan, it is Hiruko the Goblin, which is a Japanese horror film that is really, really special. Um, it's very unusual because it comes from uh, Shinya Tsukamoto. Uh, Shinya Tsukamoto all of his movies are very strange in some way, and this is certainly no exception. Uh, this is a summer movie. It takes place in a school, but it's definitely during summer. And so uh, the wife and I break this one out to kind of get that hot and sweaty summertime fun vibe. And <laughs> the monsters are great, and the effects are insane. It's just really weird. I recommend this one. I'm really glad that uh, Mondo Macabro put this one out. I know people don't like the phrase guilty pleasure, but I'm going to use it here. Guilty pleasure, guilty pleasure. Oops, I said it. This is The Hollow, which is a uh, very, very cheesy sci-fi channel level of movie. Uh, but, you know, it's not like Sharknado, where it's very self-aware of how cheesy it is. I think they were really trying to make a good movie. And for the most part, they sort of succeeded. The biggest star in the movie, of course, is Nick Carter. The biggest star in the movie, of course, is Stacy Keach. Uh, Stacy Keach plays a uh, the town weirdo that's trying to warn everybody of the dangers um, from the uh, what do you call him, <laughs> the headless horseman? I, I'm looking right at him and I couldn't think of his name. I kept wanting to call him the hollow horseman. If you find this one, like at a pawn shop or something, uh, go ahead and give it, a, give it a watch, give it a chance. Speaking of people who worked with Mario Bava, we got Ricardo Freda. I love Ricardo Freda, he's so wonderful. Uh, this is the old Olive Films Blu-ray of the horrible Dr. Hitchcock. Olive Films did a good job uh, putting this film out, but they had the shorter cut, so the Italian version is longer, the English version is significantly shorter, and somebody's putting out a long version of it with uh, both the American cut and the Italian one, and therefore I'm going to go ahead and replace this guy. But even in its American version, it's just a really haunting, creepy little movie. You gotta have Barbara Steele. You need Barbara Steele. The Horrible Sexy Vampire. Um, I hate to admit it, but this one's kind of disappointing. I'm going to watch it one more time. Not sure if it's a keeper, but this is one of the slowest Spanish horror films I've seen in a while. Um, it really takes the long way around to get there. Not a lot happens. And I'm a guy who doesn't mind in a movie when not a lot happens. I like the mood and the tone, but this is a little too much. So, I don't know. I'll give this one more chance. Oh wow, Horror Express. Oh man, um, I think my pal Brad sent me this copy of Horror Express. Um, this is classic stuff from the uh, compilations. Every horror movie compilation should have a nice uh, public domain copy of Horror Express on there somewhere. Uh, but here is the Severin Blu-ray. It is a wonderful film. I mean, how often are you going to see uh, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing teamed up with Telly Savalas in a movie? It's a little different. But yeah, this is just a stone cold classic. Less of a classic is Horror House on Highway 5. Um, this is this is a bad movie, I think. 
<laughs> I, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, the villains are really, really annoying, and the story is just a nothing story, but they were going for something weird. I don't know what was happening here. This is a great example of Vinegar Syndrome just putting out something that may not appeal to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Which they are accused of doing all the time. I know a lot of people uh, rag on uh, Vinegar Syndrome for putting out bad stuff. And this film is not helping that reputation. The Hosed. Um, this is good old Korea making a monster film. This is a, a Korean kaiju that um, is just so good. Really, really, really great movie. My copy that I had before um, had disc rot, so I picked up another one. Hopefully, this copy is not also suffering the same fate. Uh, but don't worry, if it does, this guy kept his movie stop receipt. <laughs> this was January 2nd, 2016. So this receipt has been sitting in this disc for seven years. And uh, let's see, I bought The Host, and I bought Big Trouble in Little China, and I got um, Godzilla, Maybe the new one, the newer one from uh, 2012. And then I got uh, Godzilla 2000, which I actually really like Godzilla 2000. Good stuff. All right, top 10 favorite horror movies, maybe top five. I wouldn't call it top one, but it's pretty close. Um, this is Haosu. I love Haosu. This is one of those movies that I read about in different books about horror movies, and I could not find any trace of it. And when I did find it, it was a copy that I downloaded that had no subtitles. It was just the whole movie without any subtitles. So when I finally got the file downloaded and started to skip around in the movie to see what it was all about, I discovered that it was weirder than its reputation, that the movie is even stranger than I'd read. It has just become so close to my heart that um, the wounds where I shove it in my chest cavity never heal. Uh, I have a t-shirt for Haosu, I have a pin for Haosu, and my pal Sam just got me the vinyl so I have the beautiful record to listen to this very strange music for this very strange film. Oh hello my favorite film of all time, it's House by the Cemetery. Look at that cool cover. So um, my pal Brad uh, found a guy who designs retro blu-ray covers that look like old VHS tapes and he picked this up for me so I slipped it over the cover of the blu-ray. This is just the uh, Blue Underground version. And I don't know if this guy's still around doing stuff but it's called Peculiar Pieces and he's probably on Etsy or something like that or oh well uh, excuse me Big Cartel so you can check him out um, and inside this I did a double case here and I've got um, the VHS of House by the Cemetery ripped to DVD-R so I can watch the VHS version if I want to or watch the Blu-ray version. And the VHS is sitting over there, I'm not going to grab it, but I do have the old, uh, I think it's Lightning Video? It might be the Lightning Video uh, VHS. House by the Cemetery is every half-remembered horror movie I saw on TV as a kid, but I didn't see it when I was a kid. I saw it as an adult and it really taps into that nostalgia feeling I have. Um, and of course, the greatest character that's ever lived in any movie ever is Bob. Um, everyone loves Bob. You can never get enough of praise heaped upon that boy and the weird woman who voices him. Okay, last movie for this episode. We're talking about another Fulci movie, uh, House of Clocks. I just heard a rumor that House of Clocks is getting a Blu-ray. That's very exciting. Um, I prefer the other film that good old Lucio Fulci made at the same time uh, called Sweet House of Horrors. Uh, he made two horror films for Italian television, and the rumor was is that they were too gory for television. And that is certainly true of House of Clocks. Uh, this movie gets nasty. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to re-watching this. It's been a very long time, and I do love the old Shriek Show DVDs. Uh, there's something very nostalgic for when I first got into movie collecting, I was picking up all of these. And I also liked how um, this was the same company as the Tokyo Shock 
so I have a lot of Tokyo Shock stuff. It's all Media Blasters, I believe. Yeah, House of Clocks is great. Um, I'm absolutely overdue. It's been so long since I've seen this. Way too long. Well, that's it for this episode of H. Uh, what the hell? What the heck? Wow. But you spell wow with two H's. So it's like, ha. Here's cheese. Okay, I'm done. <laughs>